One of the main reasons why I like to have our producers here is so that you guys get to meet who's growing your food, who's growing the animals that feed you, who's, who's doing all of this work for you. Because this is for you, because believe me, this, this business does not make you a millionaire. So, um, so when you find people who, who do like what Michelle does, it's really important to support them because if you don't support them, you're going to lose them, and they're going to have to go and you know raise cattle the way we don't want to eat cattle. So, um, I'm gonna this is Michelle. I met her at the farmer's market, and I kind of um, stalked her until she agreed to come teach class. And uh, I've purchased bones from her before, and I, I just I love them, and I love what she does. And I love her passion for what she does because what she does is really a lost, a lost art in our food system. So, Michelle, take Thank it you. away. Thank you, Sarah, so much for inviting me to come. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, we, uh, my husband and I have a grass-fed beef operation in southern Iowa. We are just east of Garden Grove, if anybody's familiar with the area between Garden Grove and Humiston, which is east of I-35, about an hour south. And it is rolling hills, and it is a big cattle area, and that's been traditionally, cattle have been raised in that area because it doesn't really do very well with row crops because it's, the ground is very highly erodible. And so that's why we actually got into it. We moved there in 2006, and we tried to row crop it, and it was washing away. And we there was not going to be anything. So we had to do something, and it grows great grass. I mean, the most best best grass in the world down there. Sorry about that. So uh, that's when we got into uh, raising grass-fed beef. My husband has always loved cattle, and he's never happy unless he has some cows around. And we have raised beef conventionally, and now we are raising it naturally, and it is so much better. It is so much better. Um, our animals are rotationally grazed every day. They are grass fed and grass finished. Um, you can definitely finish cattle on grass. We use a high energy grass to uh, finish them. And then they also have, they're on alfalfa, clovers, and different warm and cool season grasses. And they are happy cows because they stay on our farm from conception to finish. Normally, in a normal situation, cattle usually will stay with mama for the first six months of their life, and they usually have a pretty good life. They're out on pasture, and they are um, grazing and everything, but then they're usually taken to a feedlot after that. So our cattle get to live out, you know, and roam, basically, their whole lives. And you can tell the difference. Our cattle are very calm. They are not afraid of humans. We're in them every day. They're pets, we pet them, they have names, and yeah, we really we really love our, our mama cows and all the babies. So, uh, but what I'm gonna do today, we'll go over some more Q&A with Eric later, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a good bone broth. And um, it is recommended you use grass-fed bones for your bone broth, just because they're very healthy, they're full of all kinds of minerals and um, nutrients. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, there's, there's two different bones that we carry. And I know everyone's probably heard of the knuckle bone. And the knuckle bone is what I made the broth out of that you were drinking today. And this knuckle bone, I'm, I just wanted to show you the different size pots that you can make it in. This knuckle bone will make this size pot of broth. And that's what I made. It made 12 quarts this size. Now, not everybody's that ambitious, and you can do it in a smaller pot and reuse the bones. I have heard that. I don't because I usually do it in the big pot and it usually uses most of the goodies out of it. But if you're not doing it for a full 24 hours like I do in that pot, you could probably do it like a couple times in an Instapot or something like that and that, that would be fun. And then the other bones that we have 
Oh, the benefit of the knuckle bones is it has the collagen, the collagen in it to help with your joints and also to help heal your gut. So they're highly sought after and they are hard to find. So we are, um, I have some here today and if you want some and, you, and I, we run out, which we possibly may, um, we, if you pay for it today, we'll also, we will get them to you in two weeks and we'll bring them here and you can use them. Um, and we're also running a 20% off everything because of Cyber Monday. So uh, we will give you that 20% off even if you don't take them home today. Um, and the other, other bones come like this. They are marrow bones, and what they are is the leg bones split, and you can see the marrow right in there, and so if you use that for the broth, it makes a really good nutrition, nutritious broth as well, but not as gelatinous. It won't be quite as um, thick, but it's very good broth. I use it a lot, and it works well in a crock pot or a smaller pot. You can just use two of those bones. I just wanted to show you the different kinds of bones. And so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to, sh I'm going to just walk through the recipe. Did you want to just pass them out there? Yeah. Um, so what I did, for, what you want to do first is you want to, what you call roast or braise your bones. You want to put them in the oven for an hour, 350, salt and pepper, garlic, whatever you like to put on it. And then, um, the bone will no longer, of course, look like that. It will look like this. And this one, these got on a little longer than an hour because I was busy getting ready for tonight and I forgot them in the oven. But this is the marrow bones after they've been um, braised. And the in, so then, then I throw them in, throw that in the pot, in the bottom of the pot. Now, it works really good in the. Um, slow cooker like that that I have over there or you can use a pot this size or you can also use a pot this size this this pot will make seven quarts this pot or a crock pot will usually make um, three to four quarts okay then um, I, I put in my vegetables and what I do and I learned this from a chef's friend of mine that when you chop your onions or when you're doing your onions for other recipes, save your skins and put them in your broth because, and then if you're gonna chop your onion to put in your broth, don't, don't skin it. Just chop it, you know, into chunks about that size or whatever, and leave, just leave the skins on. I usually cut the, the, the bottom end off just because, you know, there could be dirt in there or whatever. But, um, so, and that usually takes for, a pot this size, one you know, like one medium onion, and then this would be double the recipe, and that would be four times the recipe. So, when we'll give you with the recipe there. So what we're going to do right now is we're doing, you know, a single, single recipe, and then we put in two large stalks of celery diced, two large carrots diced. And you do not need to peel your carrots. I just scrub them and I throw them in because there's a lot of nutrition. Oh, thank you. A lot of nutrition in the carrots, skins. And four cloves of garlic. Now the garlic is the same as the onions. I don't peel them. I, I don't... Um, I put the skins right in there with them and I forgot my knife but what I'll do with these I can use this I think um, you don't need to um, you don't need to chop it peel it or anything you just need to kind of smush it and then throw them in there I usually do it with a knife but this works pretty well put four cloves of garlic in there and then I usually put in a couple sprigs of 
rosemary, <coughs> and I just use fresh. If you don't have fresh, you can use um, dried rosemary. And also in the broth that I made that you tried, I did put some thyme in that as well. So you can add whatever, whatever spices you like, you know, and you want to uh, experiment with. <coughs> you can also put parsley in there. Then I use a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, pepper, and I just use a black pepper. And I generally put in a table, you can put in a half a tablespoon or a tablespoon to a tablespoon of sea salt, depending if you have to watch your salt intake or not. Yeah, I forgot the bay leaves. Um, I usually put in two bay leaves. They do give it a nice flavor. And then one of the secrets to the whole thing is the apple cider vinegar. And what that does, like Eric said, what that does is it helps bring the, um, all the minerals and everything out of the bones. Now, our, my grandmother always had a pot of bones on the stove. And they didn't take calcium supplements and they didn't have to, you know, all those things because that's where they got their minerals and calcium and everything from. And I do recommend you use um, a Bragg's or a natural um, organic vinegar with the mother. And it takes a half a cup <coughs> for a recipe. And then depending on the size of your pot, um, I didn't bring the water up here because I thought I'd probably spill it. Um, just fill your pot and leave it, leave a little bit of space on top if you're gonna be putting it on the stove, just so it doesn't boil over. But I would recommend putting as much water as you can in there to get as much broth you know, as you can. So with this, I would put um, eight to 10 cups. And basically, However much water you're putting in there, that's how many cups you're going to get back out. If you boil it on the stove, the steam's going to go up and you're going to lose some of that broth. So you want to simmer it really low. You don't want to um, boil it because if you boil it, unless you want it to simmer down and get stronger, you know, but if you like the flavor of that one, I didn't, I had it on a really, really low simmer. And that was for 48 hours. So they recommend 24 to 48 hours. I like 48 hours because it actually will uh, break down all that collagen in the joint. Could you cover it? Like with yes. The lid? yes, 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 cover it. Yes, definitely cover it because then some of that will go away. But usually, if you do it that, and if how do I want to say that? I check. I ch I kind of check mine just to make sure it's hot enough. But like when I checked it today, when I went down there, it was like 195, 200. And you don't want it too much more than that because then it's going to boil. You know, you don't want to get it to boiling. You want it below boiling. But you want it warm enough to make sure it's working on it too because you don't want it to be too, not warm enough because bad, then bacteria can grow. So you want to, I would say at least. Like a simmer. Yeah, just to really, like when I watch it, it's just like a bubble one day once in a while will come up. You know what I mean? So, okay. So then you, now you can either put it in your crock pot. I usually... I don't anymore, but when I first wrote this recipe, I usually like turned it up high and let it go for a while. I don't do that anymore because I was afraid it wasn't going to get done. But it gets done fine if you put it on low and let it go. So for 48 hours? 48 hours. It, it does a better job of getting everything out of the bone, I think. But now you can do it in an Instapot and you can do that. You can do that as well, but I would follow the Instapot recipes and I'm not an expert on that. If anybody has anybody made bone broth with an Instapot? <coughs> Is it about the same amount of time? No, I mean the recipe. I know how, how long do you yes. put it in there for? I don't remember. Um, I think I, I, whatever I read was like a couple hours or something yeah, I do like it that. Uh, okay, you do it longer. <coughs> than that. Okay, because I didn't know how. Because I did some chicken bones over the weekend, and it only called to do it for like 30 minutes, but it didn't break the collagen down. So I would recommend longer than that if you want to get the collagen from there. So, but, and 
and that's how we put that together. And then I was going to show you then how it looks after the 48 hours. And then what you'll need is a strainer and some cheesecloth. And that is just to uh, strain out all of the chunkies that you don't want in there. And I usually, um, cheesecloth is not all created equal. And this one's a pretty fine one, so I def you definitely want to double it over before you do that. And first I will get the bone out and show you what it looks like. With this batch, I used a knuckle bone. And it's going to be pretty, um, if you look closely, there was all kinds of uh, collagen around the edges of the bone that you can't see anymore. So after the 48 hours, you want to strain out one of these slotted spoons works really good. Your your veggies and meat and everything. I have, I have eaten it before, but it was really much. So that kind of shows you how much, how you have, we don't have to do the whole thing. And then when you get done with that and you get most of the stuff out, then I take it and strain it through the cheesecloth. Now, I don't think it would hurt to leave that in there if you wanted to drink it that way. I don't, I don't think it hurt anybody. And then the first time I, I did it, I made a, when I canned it, I made a mistake and I strained out the fat. This is um, the amount of tallow that I strained. I actually had two jars of this. And I strained out of a pot that big out of a knuckle bone. So if you're on the keto diet or you want the good fat in there, don't take that out. But I will tell you, if you don't like a lot of fat, because it'll, it'll get on the jars like this, you'll want to kind of mix it in with each cup so you don't get too much in one cup. But if you want to use the tallow to cook, you know, you can cook with it. It's very good to, I use it if I'm going to do a steak and a cast iron skillet and then put it in the oven. I'll use some of this. It's very, it doesn't, you know, smoke and everything like butter does. And this, I forgot to tell you this. This was the fat when you, after you braise your bones, you want to make sure and take all the fat and everything off that pan and put it in your water. And this because I couldn't bring it in the pan, this is the fat that came off of those two. Um, and some of it's the, um, from the marrow as well. So you want to put that in your pot as well. So, but I just wanted you to, sh to show you. And this is just like the big chunks of pepper. I use cracked pepper when I did this one. So, but it, and it's good. I mean, it's got really good flavor and but if you want to separate some of it out, if it's too fatty for you, and you have, have you ever seen one of these fat separators, probably. So if you um, if you pour this in here and leave that little thing on there, the fat will all come to the top, and then you can pour it out. So if you don't want it, you know you can do it either way. I I like to have some fat in there for flavor, so you can do it as much. And when you're scooping it out and putting it into your containers or whatever, just make sure you kind of scoop from the bottom and come up. Don't just skim the top, otherwise all your fat will be in one jar. So. But that's how you do it if you want to separate it out. And what else? Oh, to, to preserve it because it's, it won't last in the refrigerator for very long. A week to 10 days max. I. That's what I, what rule of thumb, anybody else know how long you can keep it in the refrigerator? I don't, but that's kind of my rule of thumb with everything in my refrigerator, I guess. So, um, 
what I've done is I have pressure canned it. And you can pressure can the jars, 10 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes for pints, 25 minutes for quarts. 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts under 10 pounds of pressure. Now I did look up to see if you could pressure cook in an Instant Pot and it told me that the FDA does not recommend it. Has anybody ever done it? I didn't know if anybody did. But I do like having it shelf stable like this because it'll last on your shelf for years. You, you know what I mean? So. You know, if you want, if you want to get a, if you get one of those big knuckle bones, it'll do this, a, a pot this size, and you can get 12 quarts. So it's a really cheap way to do your, you know, bone broth. But then, and also, I mean, you can freeze it, but I do not recommend freezing it in glass. You have a high probability of breaking, and there's nothing more frustrating than when you spend all that time to make this glorious broth, and it breaks when you take it out of the... So um, you can do it in a sea, uh, food saver bag, or you can uh, freeze it in a food, you know, uh, food safe plastic. 